We're going to begin now with Local 4 News at 5, coming to you a little bit later, obviously from the announcement we just saw. We're going to start, though, with a 93-year-old woman killed in Dearborn. Police say it was a father of four who did it. Maxine Callahan died back in late July, but now police say she was murdered. And a man has already been formally charged in the case. Defender Sean Lay is live in Dearborn tonight. Sean, police were extremely quiet about this for weeks. For 22 days, they kept quiet about this until a news conference today. They say the reason was they were watching this suspect and had a good idea of who he was. They do not believe the public was in danger while they watched him and put the case together. In the meantime, we are talking about a 93 year old tonight. Her family absolutely devastated. Those who knew her said that she was so full of life. Maxine Callahan was 93 and loved in her Dearborn neighborhood. She's a very sweet lady. She always walked with her dog and it's I would check on her once in a while and a lot of the neighbors did. Callahan was a volunteer at the Henry Ford and those who knew her just loved her. She's very, very spunky, very opinionated, very spunky, very full of life. And we expected her to live, I think, for more years. But the week of July 22nd, her life was taken from her. Local Ford defenders have learned that Callahan's daughter called her every day. When she didn't pick up, a neighbor went to check on her and called Dearborn police. Police found Mrs. Callahan. She had been hit in her head. Her cause of death? Blunt force trauma. Tonight, we've learned Callahan's car was taken. Dearborn investigators fanned out, checking camera after camera, block after block, catching a glimpse of the car and a glimpse of a man masked up for COVID. That led police to a home less than a mile away to the west and 40-year-old Chantry Evan Rice, a father of four with a wife he met at a Lutheran seminary. We're told she is in shock that her husband has now been charged with murder. Police waited 22 days to tell the public about the case. We know they were watching Rice and police wanted to make sure they had their case in order. I think that we uh, are very transparent with our community on a regular basis and in those rare cases where we have to hold on to the information until it becomes uh, substantial enough to charge someone. Back here live and Rice has indeed be, has been charged. Let's talk about what we've learned about him. 40 year old father of four here living in Dearborn. We have learned that he has been fired, was fired from U.S. Customs and Border Protection from a job as a Border Patrol agent in Texas. Police are trying to find out now why he was fired. Also, we have posted pictures of jewelry to click on Detroit.com. Please go there and take a look. Police want you to look. These are items, jewelry items found with rice. They do not belong to the victim, according to the victim's family. So police want people to come forward to identify these pieces of jewelry to see if they can link rice to going into other people's homes to steal. Guys, back to you. Yeah. All right, Sean, thanks. Today, the state says 517 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed. That's 279 fewer cases than we saw yesterday in the report. Along with that, the state reports nine new deaths, bringing our grim total in our state to 6,273. In Redford Township, a candidate who lost in the primary for state rep says something just doesn't seem right with the results. And now she's calling for the Secretary of State to launch an investigation. Rod Maloney is live in Redford Township. Rod, there was a major shift in the results the day after the election. Right, it was a it was a last minute thing. Now it all has to do with the absentee ballots that went into that silver box right over my shoulder here, and uh, it was the tenth state house district, which includes Detroit and Redford. And candidate Brenda Hill is crying foul. I am the winner of the state ref race yes. in yes. District Ten. Yes. No doubt about it, Brenda Hill smarted on election night and even the day after. She thought she'd won. She started receiving congratulations from Wayne County Democratic leaders. But then the absentee ballots arrived at City Hall. The local four final tally board shows Hill lost to Mary Cavanaugh. And for someone who was so far in the distance, the number three uh, to come out in the lead by so much uh, it's just, it just can't be believed that the process was followed. Cheater. Cheater. What we are demanding is a full investigation. And her supporters today came out and angrily protested at Redford Township Hall. Earlier in the day, her campaign sent this letter to Secretary of State Benson to investigate what they call possible corruption. Mary Cavanaugh is happy and proud and says of Hill's complaints. I actually find that very unfortunate just because um, I am very prominent in uh, Redford as far as my community involvement, um, being a part of the Democratic Club. 
Um, and my mom is Redford. Mary's mother, Lily Cavanaugh, is Redford's treasurer, prompting Hill's campaign suspicions. But Mary Cavanaugh says there's a good explanation why she won. She targeted and encouraged absentee voting. She believes Hill just counted chickens a little early. Saying any sort of decision before all of the votes are in, especially um, my uh, home district, I mean, my home township, um, is a little jumping the gun. So we checked in with Joycelyn Benson's office in Lansing. They say that they did receive a letter from Hill's campaign looking for an investigation. They say they're reviewing it and trying to decide whether something needs to move forward. Reporting live in Redford, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod, we will take uh, weather like this for the rest of August, uh, at least if th that would be the order I would follow. You know, it's really nice because temperatures in the 80s, but the humidity isn't yeah. so bad. Let's get over to Ben. That's the key to it, uh, yeah. Kim and Devin. And yeah, this time of year, August can be a cruel mistress, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I should say, uh, this week looks fantastic. Ann Arbor, uh, we got to get uh, used to looking at the big house like this on uh, Saturdays, too. Uh, 85 is where we sit right now. The dew points at 52 degrees. That is very dry air. Calm winds the pressure is high so uh, all this is working in our favor and when we see low temperatures like this in the morning uh, it kind of gives you Vegas vibes. We started out at 49 in Ann Arbor and rose into the 80s because of that dry air and full sunshine. Uh, so there was quite a bit of movement there between the low and the high. Speaking of lows, let's go through it in your four zone forecast. Metro zone, you're going to be in the low to mid 60s tonight for overnight lows. But outside of that, we're going to see quite a healthy uh, smattering of 50s here, especially out in Lenaway County. Uh, Dundee Milan, you're also going to be in the upper 50s for lows tonight. West zone on the other side of 275. Anywhere between 55 and Fenton and maybe a couple 60s there closer to the interstate. A lot of 50s in the north zone for low temperatures tonight. A couple 60s mixed in there, but generally uh, we're going to see some cool nights with that dry air. You can see it just sort of carved out here over the Great Lakes. Humidity's out to our west, south, and east. And we're just going to sit in that dry bowl here for the next few days. Uh, it's going to keep those showers away as well. Next chance of rain not rolling in here until this cold front arrives. And that's going to be on Sunday. There's a slight chance on Saturday as the heat and humidity build uh, that we could be seeing an isolated afternoon thunderstorm. But generally, it's going to be Sunday, maybe into Monday. And then we've got another extended dry stretch beyond that. It's going to take us through the majority of next week. So lows tonight heading down into the mid-60s. Again, in the metro zone, a lot of us in the 50s, but very comfortable sleeping weather, no doubt. 87 on the high side tomorrow. We'll take a few degrees off over the weekend because of the cloud cover that we're expecting. Uh, but once we get past those uh, thunderstorm chances, guys, 70s start to come into play Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So as we get closer to the start of school and what used to be football season, it will start to feel <laughs> like it yeah. in the end of this forecast. Okay, Ben, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Local 4 weather is powered by DTE. Download the Local Forecasters app today.